Well, hello once again to everyone. Greetings, first of all, to members of our Pilgrim Church family who have tuned in for today's video devotional, and greetings as well to any visitor who might be tuning in for the first time. This is Danny. I am here once again on behalf of all of the elders at the Church of Christ in Pilgrim with our weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment, or in acronym style, the word. This is scheduled for posting on Wednesday, August the 14th of 2024. <clears throat> I'm currently reading on my Kindle device a book entitled Bible Nobodies Who Became Somebodies, written by a couple of authors named Lance Wobbles and Terry McDowell, which was published in 2004. We're just about ready to wind up with only two or three left. And we'll see how many of those can be adapted for this study. When I first began reading this book, I quickly found the material and writing style impressive to the point that I chose to base our current series of weekly video devotional studies upon some of the stories that I adapted from that writing. Today brings us to our 21st session of this series so far. In the author's introduction to their book, they explain the motivation behind the writing of it with this following section that I have exerted. Many of the biblical characters we often read about were powerful leaders and heroes, such as Moses, Elisha, Daniel, the great apostle Paul, and John on the island of Patmos. But others, often overlooked by us, lived their lives in what some would call the obscure shadowlands of insignificance, Barzillai, Ahithophel, Hadad, Hogla, and Lydia. They are the lesser-known people we find tucked here and there in the pages of sacred scripture. God used people from all walks of life, not just the biblical superstars we are most familiar with. He spoke of them intentionally, and though we might consider them Bible nobodies, they truly became somebodies. Each Bible character's story from this book contains the following three segments. First, there is the reading of the passage of Scripture that introduces that week's character of interest to the readers. Secondly, there is a brief synopsis of the role played by that character within God's ongoing story of redemption. And then thirdly, there is a life lesson taken from that character's story a lesson which the authors hope will be both inspirational and encouraging for each of us in our individual walks with God. So in our first 19 lessons of this series, we studied the stories of the following individuals. From the Old Testament, we have looked at Abigail, Ahithophel, Eliezer of Damascus, Hannah, Jethro, Micaiah, Mordecai, Naboth, Rahab, Shamgar, and then one unnamed individual, the daughter of Pharaoh. From the New Testament, we have looked at a smaller list of individuals, Bartimaeus, Dorcas, Manasson, Onesimus, Simeon, and three unnamed individuals in one story. Excuse me, three unnamed individuals, the grateful leper, the young lad with a lunch, and a Roman centurion. Last week's lesson, number 20, was another New Testament study. This time was the group of three individuals, three women, named Susanna, Joanna, and Mary. Their story was entitled, The Nobodies Who Found Mundane Jobs a Joy. This story proposed a life lesson for us that should we ever begin to wonder whether whatever service we render in God's kingdom even amounts to anything at all, May we never succumb to such discouraging and dispirited attitudes. Whatever we might do, let us do it for the Lord, and in the end, he will put into our lowly work a sense of meaning. We remain in the New Testament for this week's story about another unnamed individual, a woman known simply as the Syrophoenician woman. Her tale is entitled, The Nobody who wasn't ashamed to eat leftovers. So let's begin with how scripture introduces us to this particular woman. We turn to Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28, 
And all of today's scripture readings, the text will come from the Living Bible paraphrase. Matthew says, Jesus then left that part of the country and walked the 50 miles to Tyre and Sidon. A woman from Canaan who was living there came to him, pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, King David's son, for my daughter has a demon within her, and it torments her constantly. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to get going, they said for she is bothering us with all her begging. Then he said to the woman, I was sent to help the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel, not the Gentiles. But she came and worshipped him and pled again, Sir, help me. It doesn't seem right to take bread from the children and throw it to the dogs, he said. Yes, it is, she replied, for even the puppies beneath the table are permitted to eat the crumbs that fall. Woman, Jesus told her, your faith is large and your request is granted. And her daughter was healed right then. Now, as we enter today's story, Jesus has just completed telling another parable to the crowd of people who are following him and then has even had to take time to explain its meaning to his apostles. He has now withdrawn to an ancient Phoenician area containing the cities of Tyre and Sidon, located northeast of Galilee. Mark speaks of the Lord's apparent weariness, for he records in chapter 7 and verse 24. Then he left Galilee and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and tried to keep it a secret that he was there, but couldn't. For as usual, the news of his arrival spread fast. Among those who had tracked him down is this Syrophoenician woman, who is here for one reason only. She is seeking help for her daughter, who is possessed by an evil spirit. Matthew's account of this encounter calls the woman a Canaanite, a race of people who in this time and place are the enemies of Israel. Mark reports that she is from Syrian Phoenicia. Both of these reference clear, references clearly indicate that the lady in today's story is a Gentile, someone whom any devout Jew would prefer to avoid. Students of Jesus' ministry should remember that he is always about his father's business. Today's story will show that even this detour into a Gentile area is not without spiritual purpose. God's love can reach all who sincerely seek him, even in a land some might consider spiritually dark and cursed even to a woman whom others might consider the ultimate nobody, what our reference book even labels as a nobody's nobody. By our story's end, however, we will, con we will come to understand how she is instead immortalized in Scripture as a true somebody. We see here a woman of amazing faith, although one would surmise that her nationality and geography would have limited how much she had heard about Jesus. She may even have never seen him prior to today's event, and yet her belief is quite evident by how she addresses him, quote, O Lord, King David's son or descendant, end quote. How does Jesus respond to such an address? He, quote, gave her no reply, not even a word, end quote. How does this affect the woman in her pursuit? She refuses to give up because, you see, her child's need is very urgent. Her motherly heart is very tender, and her cries are very piercing. Such is this woman's faith that when the one whose help she is seeking appears to coldly ignore her, she still refuses to be overcome with doubt. Let's look at what today's story says about this woman and the strength of her faith. First, her persistence clearly demonstrates that the voice of faith cannot be silenced by the closed ears and mouth of Christ. Faith has a strong attach, attraction for the Lord Jesus, and he must surely be charmed by this Syrophoenician woman's. His initial silence and his following discouraging comments 
may try her faith, but she does not muckle, and this undoubtedly delights his soul in the end. Secondly, even when the disciples don't treat this woman well, this woman well, she demonstrates that her voice of faith cannot be silenced by their unkind conduct. While it is true that they are busy attending to the spiritual lessons they learn from their master's parable, in doing so, they attempt to prevent the woman from approaching him. Ironically, the very reason for Christ's coming is right in front of them. When she continues to plead her case, they finally come to Jesus and say, quote, Tell her to get going, for she is bothering us with all her begging, end quote. In actuality, however, she's not crying after them, but she's crying after their master. Thirdly, Jesus finally speaks, but his words to her are not what one would expect. He says, quote, I was sent to help the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel, not the Gentiles. End quote. Despite this answer of dismissal, her voice of faith is not closed by a doctrine of exclusivity, which seems to confine the Lord's blessings to a favored few. Instead of being turned away, she instead kneels before him and once again pleads, quote, Sir, help me, end quote. And fourth, Jesus' second response is, quote, it is not right, you know, to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, end quote. Jesus' use of the term dogs is most likely a reference to how a typical Israelite views a typical Gentile. Amazingly, the desperate woman does not refute this characterization because she replies, quote, Yes, Lord, I know, end quote. This speaks to her acceptance of a very deep sense of unworthiness, and thus she does not expect a granting of relief based upon any merit on her part. She comes totally dependent upon the goodness that pervades the heart of the Son of God. As conscious as she is to being no more than a poor Gentile dog, her prayers are nonetheless unhindered, because her voice of faith is not even closed by a sense of admitted worth, worth unworthiness. Through all the hurdles she faces, this Syrophoenician woman's faith is not quenched. Her mind remains made up. She never ceases to trust Christ and his ability to answer her plea. Witness her response to Jesus' latest rebuff. After acknowledging that the Israelites more likely, most likely, refer to her as a dog, she says, quote, but even the dogs live on the scraps that fall from their master's table, end quote. Her faith has been tested. It has endured each challenge, and now Jesus sets his own royal mark of approval upon it with his final words to her, quote, woman, you have great faith. I will do what you ask me to do, end quote. With that, we are told that her daughter is set free that very hour. What life lesson can we take from the story of this faithful one? The Syrophoenician woman in today's story is a lesson to any of us who at times might think we're beyond hope. Like her, we can trust in him whose blood has not lost its power to cleanse our souls from every sin whose promise has not lost its truth in a world of uncertainty, and whose arm has not lost its power to bring eternal salvation. We could also learn from her regarding interceding in prayer on behalf of others. Remember, she came praying for her daughter. When we pray for someone else, like her, we should plead as for our own life and for our own soul. Finally, this woman stands as a lesson to every mother. With her daughter suffering, she seeks out and pleads with the one whom she fully believes can grant her heartfelt request. Her maternal instinct makes this weak and timid nobody into a strong and brave somebody. Well, I hope this latest story about another nobody in the Bible who became a somebody 
will be a blessing to you in your life. Remember, all of these weekly video posts will continue to be archived online and they are uh, accessible in a couple of different locations. First, you can look in the Pilgrim, Tennessee Church of Christ page in Facebook. Or secondly, you can access the Pilgrim Church media site on YouTube. Now, I continue to encourage each of you to make a personal commitment to join me in doing both of the following things every day between today and our next video session. Let's uh, spend time every day in the study of God's Word. By doing so, we are allowing God's Word to speak to us in whatever place our relationship with Him might be. With God's Word speaking His will into our lives, we'll find ourselves better suited to serve as the arms of Christ to those around us. A second request is let's spend time every day in prayer with God. This provides us the opportunity to acknowledge His sovereignty, to thank Him for all the ways He has blessed us, to express repentance for and ask forgiveness of our sins, and finally, as we see with the woman today in today's story, to intercede on behalf of those whom we know and love who might be in need of a special blessing from God within their individual lives. If you are not already doing so elsewhere, then I certainly invite you to join us in Bible study, in worship, and in midweek fellowship at the Church of Christ in Bigram. If you should pay us a visit, I can assure you, you will receive a friendly greeting and a warm welcome by our church family. Well, I hope that you can join us for the next maybe a couple of weeks, as we slowly conclude this, what has been to me a very interesting study of biblical individuals who some might characterize as nobodies. Again and again, as we have found, God's word demonstrates how when they place their lives into his hand, that allows them to be used by him as true somebodies. With each uh, story, we will be presented with a valuable lesson from that individual of interest, a lesson which we are encouraged to apply to our relationship with God so that we can, in some form or fashion, be somebodies for him to those around us. So until our next study rolls around, please remember I love each one of you. Take care and goodbye.